people who have met their online friends what made you instantly regret it. Met my best friend at the time on League of Legends. After talking every day for three years, I ended up moving to his state much closer to him so we decided to finally meet. We talked about all the things we'd do together and how awesome it would be. I loved him so, so much. He was there for me through so much and was a wonderful friend. He had a new girlfriend at the time of Armida and he brought her along with him. I had no problem with this because I loved to meet the woman who makes him happy. It was abundantly clear from the get-go that she wasn't a real big fan of me. I did my best to be kind and still had tons of fun. I didn't hear from my friend much after that. A mutual good friend of ours messaged me and when I asked about my best friend, they said his girlfriend was telling people that I was basically an awful person for whatever reason. Three years lapped her and he's engaged to this woman and I'm happy for him, but I haven't spoken to him in those three years. I still miss him every day and I wish I could be there for him on his wedding day. Not instant regret, but did make me realize things could have gone badly if this friend hadn't been a good human. There was a guy I used to play Halo 2 with all the time. We were playing Halo one day and I made some off-the-wall comment about how bad traffic was due to them redoing one of our local roads. He said his town was redoing a lot of roads too. I think I had a friend over or coming over and I forgot to mute my mic and said the road he lived on, asking when he had to leave to come over. Anyways, my Xbox buddy was like, holy crap, do you live in XYZ? And I told him, yeah. Turns out he lived like five miles away from me on the other side of town. We ended up meeting up and I was about 11 or 12 at the time. He was like 17 and he went and bought me a burger and milkshake and we chatted. Pretty cool dude from what I remember. But when I got home that night, I thought about how different that could have been if he wasn't just some high schooler trying to make a kid's night with a burger and shake. My brother met a girl in person that he'd known for four or five years online, during which time they kind of had an online relationship. She had brought her friend with her to meet him and while they were sitting around a table awkwardly making conversation, with my brother apparently quite shocked at how bad she looked in person compared to how she looked online and having absolutely no interest in her other than his friends, the girl sent her friend a message saying, Oh my God, get me out of here. He's looking at me like he wants to jump me. But she accidentally sent it to my brother. What ensued was likely incredibly painful to be a part of. My brother showed her his phone and looked at her in disgust. Met a girl I really liked on World of Warcraft, but she lived in another country. After a couple of vacations there, it turned into a relationship. I made the decision to move and start a new life there with her. After living there for four months, I slowly realized she was crazy as hell. Huge mood swings paired with a lot of aggression. I ended up getting stabbed in the side by her while asleep. Needless to say, after getting out of the hospital, I took the first plane back home. She's still in a psychiatric hospital. I have a weird story about a lesbian I met online and eventually IRL. For a reference, I'm a bi girl. We started talking after I made a comment on a lesbian forum about being a single lesbian mom. I still didn't know if I was bi or lesbian at the time. We started messaging a lot. Hundreds of texts a day. This included some sexy messages and pictures too. But she was always obsessed with my daughter. Like almost demanding pictures of her in updates on her. Eventually we arranged to meet up. When we finally see each other in person, she looks shocked and asks where my daughter was. I said she was being babysapped by my mom so we can have a date. I could tell this threw her off a little bit. After our date, we started hooking up in my place. Even then, she was still asking about her. After this, can I meet her? Will you let me babysit? Do you think she'll start calling me mommy? I was like, chill. She's one and a half. This combined with her being obsessed with my daughter's stuff, including stealing a pacifier, a dirty onesie, and going through the diaper pail, I decided this lady's crazy. She ended up stalking me for a while, but I was moving back in with my mom anyway, so I managed to escape. I was 13 and had a 20-year-old pen pal in Hong Kong. Both of us female. We met on Tumblr and emailed each other regularly. My parents were CC'd in all of our correspondence. And we basically just talked about our cultures. About a year of us talking went by and she said that her university allowed her to study abroad in Europe for a semester. And she chose my country. Fun. I was excited. However, some time went by and our friendship kind of faded. To the point where I had forgotten she was even coming to my country. 
About two weeks before she was supposed to come, she emailed me that her student accommodation had to be cleaned out, so she couldn't access it on the night she arrived. She needed a place to stay for one night. I asked my mom and she agreed to pick her up from the airport with me and that she could stay with us for one night. I mean, we trusted this girl. I was very open about my friendship with her. We had pictures and everything. So two weeks later, we pick her up from the airport and we didn't click. She kind of annoyed me, but it was late and so we just went home. We get home and get her settled. We went up to my room and she gave me some presents and we chat a little bit. She then says, Thanks for letting me stay here this semester. Huh? Excuse me? This semester? I asked her like, What do you mean? You can stay here tonight. We can see each other during the weekends if you want to hang out. But you can't stay here. She goes quiet. We go to sleep. At this point, I just wanted her to go away and I got what I wanted. The next morning, I wake up and she's gone. I don't even know how she got out because we locked the doors at night, but she just vanished. We have special locks that you need a key for to open and the key was somewhere else in the house. Her suitcase was still there. I tried calling her but she didn't pick up. She eventually texted me asking if my mother could drop off her suitcase at a train station 40 minutes away at a certain time. My mother brought the suitcase and that was that. Never seen her or spoken to her again after that. Now that I think about it, I have a theory about why this went down like it did. She most likely put my address on her visa application as her place of residency during her stay and needed to stay in my house in case immigration was going to check if she was actually there. When I was in high school, I met a guy from a different high school in a local chat room. We headed off and after a few days, we agreed to meet up at the store I worked at once I finished work. Well, I guess he showed up a little early with a friend and came through my check stand. I thought it was him since we'd swapped photos, but I was really shy and didn't want to be wrong. I waited for him to introduce himself but he never did and he and his friend paid for whatever they had and left without conversation. I was still hopeful that wasn't the guy so I waited for him for an hour after my shift. Of course he never showed because that absolutely was the guy. He must have been disappointed when he met me in the checkout line and instead of being a decent person and saying he wasn't interested, he just ghosted me. If I could go back in time, I definitely would have said something to him at the check stand. That's my one regret. When I was 14, I had an online friend two states away who was 14. He and his mom took a trip to see me and the first thing we did when we saw each other was run full speed at one another. Our heads bounced off each other and I chipped my tooth and broke his braces. I'm pretty sure his friend tooth was also loose and had to go to the dentist to fix it. A friend I had for six years flies over to Australia to hang with me for a month. Little did I know he was a little bit taller than me. I was 5 feet 10 inches. He was well 6 feet 7 inches. I never knew he was this tall. He never talked about it. And when I was at the Brisbane airport waiting for him, I texted him stating, I don't know where you are, to which he replied, Look up. Towering over everyone is this blonde guy that has the arms pan of the airport lobby. I cried, we laughed and I regret bringing him over because my ceiling almost hits his head. It was my friend Kate who befriended this girl Jessica, who allowed us to come and stay with her when we traveled to the U.S. Jessica was rude to me instantly and kept my friend away from me. I'd go upstairs and she'd find a reason for them to go downstairs. She had Kate share her bedroom and she'd lock the door for hours. So I'd just go off and do my own thing. We met her two odd friends and they both ignored me. When it was time for Kate and I to move on to another state, Jessica insisted on coming with us. The lady we stayed with in another state, Robin, took no crap and called Jessica out on her strange behavior. Jessica proceeded to lock herself in a room and demanded Kate stay in there with her. They were in there all day, and eventually Kate came out and said to me that there's something wrong with Jessica and she's actually scared. Kate and I had plans to stay with another online friend Matt in another state, and Jessica demanded we cancel because she doesn't like her trust Matt. We said no, this is our holiday and we've paid for our flights. And Jessica then said she'll come with us, but we can't meet up with Matt. We said no, she cried and we laughed. Kate blocked her on everything. Kate's mother called us not long after saying Jessica contacted her crying, saying Kate is in danger and that we abandoned Jessica and she's so concerned for my friend's safety. It was actually incredibly scary. Kate later found out from another girl, Jane, 
They all knew each other from a forum, that Jessica had been telling everyone they were in love and had even slept together. I don't know how much of that is true, but I've known Kate for 20 years now, and she's never identified as anything other than straight. She denied it 100%. Jessica was just obsessed with her, and months later Kate heard Jessica was telling everyone she was saving money to come to our country to find Kate. She never did, thankfully. Other than the time spent with this girl, we had a great holiday and made some good friends. I, 22-year-old female, had a 26-year-old male friend online for 11 years before we met. I'm Canadian and he's American. We met on a role-playing site when we were quite literally still kids and were a massive part of one another's lives, especially during our teenage years. We spoke every day through texts on the phone, had each other on social media. We even knew and sometimes spoke to each other's family and friends in real life. He called me his light and his sister, and I called him my brother. We were family. It would take a whole novel to explain our 11-year friendship and what we'd been through together. But I'll just try to make it short by saying he had a very crappy and unstable life and had a lot of mental health problems. He was a narcissist. I spent many years being his emotional crutch and punching bag, helping him find jobs and being there for his breakdowns. I never broke off the friendship because after all those years, I kind of felt responsible for him. Anyway, last year we finally decided to meet. We were both grown adults and saved money to go on a 10-day trip to a dream destination of mine in the States. I knew this likely would not go well. I knew he was a narcissist, but I just had to meet him. I had to meet my brother, the guy that was there for over a decade. I needed to see him face to face. On this trip, he, one, abandoned me on a mountain. During a hike because he decided he wanted weed. When he came back, I was obviously mad and wanted to go back to our hotel but he told me to wait for him in the car while he did the hike on his own. I took an Uber home and he returned as well four hours later. Two, automatically assumed I'd shell out $300 for him to buy a laptop he wanted without asking me. Just brought me to the store to look around while we waited for our movie to start at the theater and sprung it on me. I refused. And three was overall inconsiderate. We only ate at places where he wanted to eat, when he wanted to eat, only did things he wanted to do and not me, despite the trip being my idea. And I missed out on a lot because he just wanted to sit around and do nothing. And so much more. What hurt the most is when I confronted him about it. He told me, you're not my girlfriend. I don't need your approval or need to change for you to like me. I cut the friendship off and blocked him when we returned home. I also plan on retaking my dream trip one day and doing it properly this time. When I was 19, I jumped on a flight to meet a friend I had known for about four or five months. We both went through family bereavement and were a shoulder to cry on for each other, via the phone or internet. And we just decided to meet for a few days in a country between us. Until then, everything had been perfect. She was the coolest girl, really smart, the kind of person you want to be around all the time. When we met, things started great, but a day later she confessed, you're not what I expected. What? 19 years old and not very confident. This knocked me sideways. I don't know, you just seemed different. I never hid who I was before we met and was completely open. And to put a real sour taste on the rest of my time with her. Instead of chatting nonstop and watching Jackass on TV in the hotel at night, we went quiet and straight to sleep, ate in silence. I put as much effort as I could into it, but I still never got to the bottom of how I was different. We went our separate ways texted for a few days, and then never spoke again. Not quite an instant regret, but there were two people I was meeting, Macy and Maya, for the purpose of this story. We discussed meeting again, planned to have sleepovers, just generally have fun. The first day we meet up went really well. We all had a good time, I thought it went brilliantly. Then a few weeks later, I found out they were carrying out all the plans without me. They still have sleepovers to this day when Maya's back from uni and I'm just left out. I don't speak to either of them anymore. It hurt. The worst part was, I'd met Macy a few times before and it was fine. This all happened after I met Maya at the same time. A few months down the line, Maya confessed she had a crush on me. Don't know if that played into it, but never actually met him, but played Apex with a dude pretty regularly. Almost every day, we finally exchanged info and then he used to call me repeatedly and depressed fits and complain about how girls don't like him. It sucks because I wanted to help, but like once it hit 36 calls in one day, I had to block. 
I actually worked with this lady at the time. She was good-looking and very flirtatious. Most importantly, we both played World of Warcraft. She ended up inviting me to join her server and of course me wanting to get closer to her, I joined. We played for a time and had a good PvP group going. Her regular friends. Of course, she was still flirty with me in-game and I was back. All in group chat. Either way, we had some great times together slaying players in PvP. Summer comes and it's a company barbecue. I find out she's bringing one of our PvP partners to the event. Cool, it was her husband, a cop. I've been virtually flirting with her in-game in front of him for three months. In my case, he got freakishly obsessive and possessive. Met online through a fandom. After a few years, the fandom pretty much fell apart, but a handful of us stayed friends because we actually had a fair amount in common. D was very normal. The rest of the group seemed to love him. About four years after just being online mates, we met in person. And it went fine. We interacted a lot on social media. I had a really busy period in my life, but managed to squeeze in a Christmas get-together at my place for my little group of friends, including D. After that, my online activity decreased drastically due to being busy. And when I managed to get on Facebook, I noticed that most of the group were no longer friends with D. Weird, but whatever. I checked my messenger and saw a message after message after message asking why I wasn't responding. What was I doing? Could we arrange a meetup? And things like that. I explained I was super busy and it was also coming up to the anniversary of my mom's death. So just give me some time and we'll see about meeting up another time. He said, oh yeah, I forgot about the anniversary. You can have that day, but I expect a response after. Screw that. I blocked him. So he sent email after email after email asking me, what is your problem? What do you think you're doing? And things like that. So I blocked his email too. After three very peaceful weeks, there was a knock at my door. It was D. And he had a six-page letter detailing why we had to be friends. I shut the door. I used an anonymous email thing to tell him if he contacted me again or showed up at my door, I would call the police. I went on Facebook and told everyone, including the two remaining mutual friends about all of it. And could the mutuals not share anything about me and my life and actively discourage him from attempting to make contact? And the friends who had long since unfriended him started messaging me that they stopped talking to him because of how creepy he was being in PMs about me, always asking if they knew what I was doing. Had I talked to them? Was I seeing anyone? Or if I was actually busy? Because he was convinced I wasn't. And things like that. In return, I told them how he'd been trying to convince me to stop being friends with them. Because according to him, they were all sorts of horrible things. And that they were just incredibly jealous and hated how close he and I were. I assumed he was just buttered because they stopped talking to him. So he was just making up a bunch of stuff about these people who had always been perfectly nice to me. One incredibly weird occurrence just before all this happened was telling me a mutual friend on Facebook that I was heading to the aquarium in London with my daughter. Mutual friend also being in London that day with their daughter. And maybe we could grab a coffee and let the kids play in the park for a bit. I checked my messages later that evening and Dee was incredibly upset because he'd waited at Farrington Station exit for two hours so he could come to the aquarium too. And I didn't show up. We didn't get off at that station. But one that was two stops after and closer to where we were going. I haven't heard a peep in over a year. He's apparently deleted his Facebook and Instagram and thankfully just disappeared. We met over at Dead by Daylight game. He was really charming, funny and nice. Then he fell in love with one girl of our gaming group and they started a long-distance relationship. He even flew over to meet her in person. Turns out he's an abusive, narcissistic jerk who constantly belittled my friend. He gaslighted her and loved to play psycho games with our group. We stopped playing with him after a few weeks because he was so toxic to our group. Sadly, my friend struggled at that time and had difficulties breaking up with him. Took her several weeks to finally do it. She's so much better now. For my story, he wanted sex. I just wanted friendship. He had photos from when he was 16 as the only photos he shared. He was 24 and looked nothing like that now. So much so that I couldn't tell he was the same person as in the photos. I was barely 18 and inexperienced in the world. Money didn't impress me, but he kept trying anyway. Motorcycles terrify me. 
but he kept trying to up his bad boy image by telling me all about his. All in all, we were totally incompatible, but he kept trying. When I wouldn't bite, he decided I instantly hated him. That was more than 15 years ago. He's still using the same photos on meetup sites. I called him out on it. He doesn't care. He says no one looks twice if he uses current photos. Truth is, it's his personality that sucks, not his face. I had a group of online friends for a bit and I'm really close with my older brother, like best buds. And one day when we were playing League of Legends, I asked my brother to join after a while. I guess my brother was better at the game than me because they stopped inviting me to any games. So I was eventually separated from the group. One of them came to my state for an event and asked my brother if he wanted to go. He said, then asked me. I was a bit hesitant, but after my brother insisted I went. I did have fun, but there were moments that made me remember I'm not really in that group anymore. For mine, the lady was crazy. We met through an app that was advertised as a meet friends app and not a dating app. Well, turns out it was a dating app. However, she put in her bio that she was married with two kids. I put that I was in a long-term relationship and looking for friends. By the way, I'm a guy, she wasn't. So when we arranged to meet up, her husband and two kids were there as well as my girlfriend. Everything was going great. Hung out a few times and added each other on Facebook. Turns out, she was super into the whole breastfeeding and public thing. Like, I get it. You go, girl. But she was super obsessed with it. For out of every five pics she posted to Facebook was her boob and her kid's mouth. She got angry when you looked away in public. Like, she wanted you to stare at her while she breastfed. Just got to the point that I was super uncomfortable with it and moved on. I met her after gaming with her for about a year and a half. My parents allowed me to have her visit for a weekend. Unbelievably beautiful girl, had had a lot of deep talks on the phone, were frequently flirting quite hard and stuff. She kind of was my first love interest. We went out for a drink with a few friends of mine, and she started hitting on my best friend the second she saw him. Didn't even pay attention to me the whole evening. And the first thing she said the next morning was, let's go to his place. That really hurt. 